Good morning, everybody. It's good to see you today. My name's Ross. I'm one of the pastors here at St. Mark's. It's good to be in worship with you. Uh, I wanted to start out and ask you today, do you believe it's possible to give thanks in every situation? Like, really, do you think that's possible? Especially when the, when the going gets tough uh, in the life of a disciple, can you give thanks in every situation? I want to explore that with you today, and um, I thought we'd start out with a video of a demonstration of discipleship so we can kind of get our, get, our, get our minds wrapped around what it looks like to be a disciple. So guys, I'm going to go ahead and play this video, so, so check this out. This is the life of a disciple. <laughs> Here comes the big block. Oh. I need some oxygen. Uh, help me, dude. I'm not going to make it. Uh. <laughs> Touchdown. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, let's see. I'm not sure this is uh, working anymore. There it is. Let me bring the lights back up, guys. Isn't that life right there? Like sometimes you just, you feel like as soon as you get the handoff, somebody's in the backfield and you're like, man, what happened to my blockers? <laughs> and you're just running around and, and you're getting chased by all these forces trying to drag you down. That's life, isn't it? I mean, it feels like some, some days you just can't, it's like there's one defender after another coming after you. If that's life, um, that is most definitely what it looks like to be a disciple, though. To be a follower, a faithful follower of Jesus Christ. Uh, in fact, Paul says, and we're going to look at 2 Timothy today, he says today that uh, if you want to live a holy life in Jesus Christ, you're going to face harassment for it. Being a faithful follower of Jesus Christ means that um, there is a higher chance of rain. In fact, last chance, last time I checked, it's 100%. Uh, if you're following Jesus, you're going to get chased. You're going to have forces that surround you that want to bring you down. And that's for this reason. It's not an accident, right? It's not like, man, it just sort of happened by accident. Number one, uh, we live in a fallen world. Things aren't right in the world. Do you agree? If we can't agree on that, man. It's hard to be in this world. And then, once we set out on this lifelong journey to belong to Christ, to faithfully follow Christ, here's essentially what we've signed up for. We've signed up to be a part of the cure. Uh, there's a Coldplay song I love. Do you know it? Where one of the lines is, am I a part of the cure or am I part of the disease? Once you become a faithful follower of Jesus Christ, you become a part of the cure. You're following Jesus into the places where God's conquering love, which came in Jesus, meets up with the woundedness of the world, including your very own. You're following Jesus into that space. And so life gets hard. Life looks like that poor, this poor guy here. As soon as you get the handoff, somebody's in the backfield, and then somebody's chasing you, you're running in the wrong direction, and then you finally realize, man, i got a reverse field, then you see open field, and then you need oxygen, right? And you stumble over the finish line. That's what it looks like. That's what discipleship looks like. But what I wanted to ask you today was, do you think it's possible in that life to give thanks in every situation? you think? Like, imagine this guy, right? Imagine this guy. 
Let's see if I can get this to work. So right now, right now things are good, right? He's not taking the hand off yet, but then, bam! Can you imagine right here, this guy's going, oh, thank you. I'm so thankful right now. This is great. And then, look at this. Do you see how many defenders around him right now? Can't, now picture him. He's smaller than all four of them. He's going, oh, thank you. So thankful right now. Thank you. Right? Now when he gets into the open field, yeah, maybe he's like, thank you. But then he gets to like the 40-yard line and he starts to slow down. You see him like, ugh, 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 thank you. Do you think it's possible? Here's what I want to say today. Here's the good news. The good news is this. Uh, Wait, sorry. That's not what I want. Can we go to the entry image, Mark? We'll, we'll go back to this guy in a minute. <laughs> Love this guy, man. Look at him. Gets thrown around. Go to the entry image if you would, please, Mark. I hope we got the video again. Maybe we're going to get it on repeat. I wouldn't mind it. I've watched it about 100 times this week. <laughs> I get new joy out of it every time. Well, shoot, maybe we're not going to get it. There we go, yeah, all right. Hey, today, back in the booth, we have Greg Moran, we have Mark Vance, we have Roger Reeves, and do I see a Sean Reeves there too? All right, let's give him a round of applause. Can you give thanks when the technology doesn't work? You can. So, hey, here's what I want to talk to you about this week. We can give thanks in every situation. Why? Because Jesus is with us through hardship. And what I want to say too specifically is Jesus runs with us in the race and he crowns us in the end. That allows us to give thanks in every situation. Jesus runs with us. You know, imagine him running with that guy as he's surrounded by tacklers. Jesus is with him there. And then when we fall over the finish line, Jesus is there picking us up, our breathless bodies picking us up and putting a crown of resurrection glory on our heads. Jesus is with us in the race and he's at the finish line. That allows us to give thanks in every situation. Now, in practice though, how are you doing at giving thanks in every situation, huh? I'll, I'll confess I already told you the story last week about how I forgot to send thank you notes. I couldn't even send thank you notes for my high school graduation, let alone when life happens, right? By the way, a couple of you said, Ross, you should go send those high school thank you notes anyways. I'm trying to find them in the recycling bin so I can do that. (laughs) Thanks for the advice. So here's the thing about why I think I think it's hard for us to give thanks in every situation, to know what it's like to give thanks in every situation as a disciple. Right? It takes practice. But the life of the discipleship is is designed for deepening gratitude and deepening joy. Jesus says in John 15, I said these things to you so that my joy will be in you and so that your joy will be complete. Do you believe that discipleship is designed for deepening joy? Or are you like, man, being a Christian is a bummer. I want to have some fun in life. Jesus says the best joy is being a Christian. Here's why I think it's hard for us to discover that deepening gratitude as a disciple. Number one, friends, I think especially in our culture here, in this neighborhood, in 2016, I think we don't know what it's like to give thanks in the discipleship race because we're not always running the discipleship race. We're running another race, and it's called the rat race, right? Let me reframe it in terms of the football play today. Instead of running that handoff play, that simple running play, every day of our lives, this culture teaches us this. I'm going to move this speaker so I can, don't trip over it and fall down. 
Our culture kind of teaches us you need to run a Hail Mary every day. Everyone know what a Hail Mary is? Raise your hand if you don't know what a Hail Mary is. It's okay if you don't. It's a safe space. Hail Mary is the last play of desperation. You're down at the end of a football game and you, got, you just hurl a 50-yard pass as the, as the time expires and hope somebody catches it in the end zone. Our culture teaches us that that's the way to live. Every day is a desperate act of seeking the next accomplishment, the next title, the next thing. And we scurry around frantically, striving. Hail Mary on two on two, ready, break. And every day we start out doing that. We don't even notice that the culture is telling us we have to do that. We're running that race. I got to get the next thing. I got to get to a certain number. I got to get the next title. I got to get what my neighbor has. And guess what? Why we don't practice gratitude in that? Because that race is not designed for gratitude, is it? How on earth could you pause to give thanks when that race has you doing this? On to the next thing, on to the next thing, on to the next thing. Hail Mary on two, on two. Ready, break. Every day. We're on to the next thing. We're looking forward to the next achievement, the next promotion, how we can build our portfolio. When we're running that race, it's hard to learn the beauty of practicing gratitude in every situation. But then, the second thing of why I think it's hard for us to give thanks in every situation is because even if we're running that discipleship race, which the good news is this, by the way, this is grace, that every day we can wake up and join Jesus' huddle again. Even when we get back into Jesus' huddle, we start running this discipleship race Again, giving thanks in every situation takes practice. How many of you, when a relationship went sour, or you lost a job, or you were in depression, or you went through financial hardship, you woke up and you said, man, I just feel so thankful today. How many of you took a risk as a disciple of Jesus Christ? You took a risk to live out your calling, and you just felt thankful for it. That's rare, isn't it? Practicing gratitude in every situation takes just that. It is practice. It's that quintessential thing where we can't feel our way into acting grateful. We have to act grateful, and then we'll feel it. That's what makes giving thanks so hard. We've talked about Paul before, right? Paul is the great example of giving thanks in every situation, right? We read the verse from him last week from 1 Thessalonians. It was at the end of our video. He says, give thanks in every situation for that's God's will for you in Christ Jesus. He gives that that thing, giving thanks in every situation, special treatment. I want to show you today what he says in 2 Timothy Mark, I'm going to have you do this for me. Uh, 2 Timothy, just the beginning of the verse there. These are some other words from Paul. This is uh, chapter 4, starting with verse 6. This is what it looks like to give thanks in every situation. But I'm going to show you how Paul himself struggled with this, right? How it takes practice. And if we practice it, we can do it. When we realize something in particular. He says, as for me... I'm already being poured out as a libation. And the time of my departure has come. I fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. From now on, there is reserved for me the crown of righteousness which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all those who have longed for his appearing. We're going to stop there for a minute. You can keep that up there, though, Mark. That's fine. Beautiful words from Paul there, right? Aren't those beautiful words? Remember what I said? Jesus is going to crown us at the finish line. Paul is describing, I am that little runner who's out of breath and I'm getting ready to fall over and collapse at the finish line. I've made it. 
I live the life of faith. I'm going to collapse at the finish line. I'm going to get crowned by Jesus himself. Did you hear it? Jesus is going to be at the finish line. Sounds beautiful, right? Listen to these next verses, though. They're so human. It sounds like something from our own lives. Listen. Do your best to come to me soon, for Deimos is in love with this present world, has deserted me and gone to Thessalonica. Paul's about to air out his laundry list. That guy, Crescens, I don't know if that's how you pronounce it, actually, has gone to Galatia, Titus to Dalmatia. Do you hear what he's saying? Everybody is leaving me. Next slide, Mark. Only Luke is with me. Luke is chopped liver. <laughs> Poor Luke. Get Mark. Get somebody else. Get Mark and bring him with you, for he is useful in my ministry. I've sent Tychicus to Ephesus. When you come, bring the cloak I left with Carpus at Troas. I even left my coat. Everything is falling apart for me. Bring the books and above all the parchments because he's a writer. Next slide. Here's where it gets real bad. Alexander. Give Alexander some boo. How about some booing? Listen to this. Alexander the copper, coppersmith did me great harm. Mm. The Lord will pay him back for his deeds. This is Paul. Do you hear this? The Lord will pay him back from his deeds. You must also be aware of him, for he strongly opposed our message. At my first events, no one came to my support, but all deserted me. Keep it there, Mark. This is Paul. This is Paul. Let's see if it'll come up for me or not. Yes, there's Paul. He said, I'm going to run the race with Jesus. He's given his life to Jesus, right? Everything I have, Paul says, belongs to him. I am in him, he is in me. I'm going to follow him into the places where his conquering love meets the world's woundedness. Yikes. Bill has deserted me. Bobby's deserted me. Those weren't their names, but they had these other Greek names. And I left my coat. Here he is. Paul, I love these lines. Listen to these lines, right? It's so good. It's from the same, same letter earlier on. This is right before he writes those pretty words about getting crowned at the finish line. Uh, let me see if I can find it here. I'm not finding it. I'm sorry right now. See, even I lose my place in my Bible sometimes, right? Basically, he says in 2 Timothy, he says what I read to you earlier, what I quoted earlier. He says, if you're going to live a holy life in Christ, you're going to get harassed for it. This is Paul. Paul later says, have you heard these words in, in the letter of Philippians? He says, I've learned to be content with everything. Have you heard those words before? Do you know when he wrote that letter? He was in prison. Do you hear what Paul says? I've learned it. I didn't wake up one day and say, God, thank you, like when he was surrounded by all these people. Thank you. All these people deserting him, and he's surrounded by all the forces of the world trying to drag him down. He didn't feel thankful. He learned it. And here's why he learned it. Go to the back to the Thessalonians there at the end, Mark. Next verse. May it not be counted against them, the people who deserted me, or who, were, who weren't at my trial, at my trial. But the Lord stood by me and gave me strength so that through me the message might be fully proclaimed and all the Gentiles, all the people who aren't part of God's family yet might hear it. So I was rescued from the lion's mouth. Mark, can you go back to the very first verse of that chapter? Next slide. There's a little paradox here that Paul, Paul teaches us, friends. This is why we can give thanks in every situation. Are you with me? 
A little paradox. For now on there is reserved for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on that day. Now go to that very that slide I just read, Mark. But the Lord stood by me and gave me strength. What's the paradox? This is what, friends, this is the gospel. This is what allows us to give thanks in every situation of our lives. If we run this redemption race with Jesus, it's this paradox that fuels our gratitude in every situation. Paul says, Jesus is there. And Jesus is there. When I'm running the race and I'm threatened by everything that's happening in the world, I've set out on a journey with Jesus. He runs the race with me. And when I fall over dead, collapsed at the finish line, He will be the one to pick me up off the ground and crown me with the crown of resurrection glory. And so Paul practiced that. When he was in prison, he said, no, God is with me. He's here, and he's also going to meet me when I finish this race. When his friends were deserting him, he said, nope, he's with me, and he'll be there at the end of the race. When he left his coat, and he was cold, God is with me, and he'll meet me at the end of the race. Hey, for fun, one more time. Let's watch it. Think of discipleship now. Think of Paul. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, God. You're with me. You're with me. You'd never leave me deserted, God. You said it. You'll never leave me orphaned. You're going to lead me to green pastures. You're going to give me some friends who are going to block for me. You're going to give me a friend who's going to put a really good block on. Bam. (laughs) And when I'm out of oxygen, when I'm tired and I'm weary, I have no strength left in my body and I collapse at the finish line. His friend's like, yeah, boy! <laughs> you're going you're gonna to lift up your arms. Do you believe that's Jesus? Do you believe that Jesus is running every step of this redemption race with you? Are you running the discipleship race, friends? Are you giving yourself to that rat race that's not designed for gratitude? It's not designed for deepening joy. This one is. But it takes practice. It takes practice. It takes, when you are surrounded, saying, why can I give thanks right now, God? Every day, every time you're surrounded, why can I give thanks? Jesus is no less with me right now than when I'm in that open field, that pasture. I'll close with this story, okay? A real life story of not a football story, not a Paul story. I stay in touch with this friend who um, really struggles with depression. Really struggles with depression. And you know when his depression went through the roof? when um, he got mired in the rat race. He got fired from his job. And so that's when we started being in touch. His depression went through the roof. Do you know why his depression went through the roof then? Because he said, Ross, I was running the rat race to run away from my hurt. Have you been there? I stayed in the rat race because it it was my drug for my hurt. And once he got fired, man, all this stuff came out. And he started struggling with depression. He also at that time gave his life to God fully. Gave his life to God fully. And we would stay in touch. And he would have some dark days, friends. And I needed him too, by the way. It wasn't just he, a one-way thing. And so he'd call me and say, Today, hey, it was, a, it was a bad day. Today was a bad day. 
And I, I learned to kind of dread, to be honest with you, these times when we touch base, right? Have you, have you been there? When it, there are some times when your friends are hard to be friends with? Well, this guy was it. But he kept trying to follow God. He kept trying to run this discipleship race, but the depression was still there. And he called me and he'd say, man, Ross, I don't know, man. I don't know. And one day, we got in touch. And you know how it was? I was like, oh, man. He had had a, 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 like a sleepless night. Depression peaking. And he says to me this. He goes, Ross, I just have so much gratitude in my heart today. Hello? Who are you? I have so much gratitude in my heart today. I have so much joy because I know that though these clouds are overhead right now, I have learned that the sun is still there. I have learned that God is with me even now as I feel this. And you know how he got that, friends? He practiced it. In depression, he said, can I give thanks right now? For what can I give thanks? God is with me. God is with me. God is with me. And he kept practicing that until when the depression came, he said, thank you. God is with me. So hey, did you get a gratitude journal last week? If you didn't get one, we have extras, do we not? I hope we do. I hope I'm not lying to you. That would be a bad lie. Get a gratitude journal. What we're trying to get you to do is be in the practice of gratitude. And here's what I want you to do this week in your journal. Draw a column, two columns on a page. Are you with me? Am I making sense? In one column, write the things that are a source of struggle right now for you. Whether it's life, whether it's in your faith journey, your discipleship journey, this is what I'm struggling with. Write that in one column. Vomit it out. And then every day I want you to write something in the second column next to it. Next to everyone, okay? You with me? Jesus is with me and will meet me in the end. Next to each one, Jesus is with me and will meet me in the end. Friends, Jesus is with us and will meet us in the end. Let's pray. God, we give thanks today because we can give thanks in every situation. Grow that practice in us. Help us to run the race of discipleship and no other race. Help us by the power of your Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, amen.